This is Dental All-Stars, where we bring you the best in dentistry on marketing, management, and training. Here's your host, Alex Nottingham. Welcome to Dental All-Stars. The title of this podcast is, Is a Dental Consultant Worth It? Our guest is Larry Gazzardo. Larry Gazzardo is the head instructor and lead consultant at All-Star Dental Academy. He is also a faculty member at the Dawson Academy. He frequently speaks nationally and internationally to prestigious dental institutions, including the Hinman Dental Society, Chicago Midwinter, Yankee, and many more. Please welcome Larry Gazzardo. How are you? I think those are almost fighting words. So I think I think this is going to be a very, very interesting uh, little meeting here, this podcast, because you already got me worked up. So It was interesting. Before we began, we, we were kind of uh, tussling with the the title and you wanted to be a little bit more normalized and benign. I'm like, let's go right at it. And I know this is uh, what you've done for over 30 years. Uh, you're a very successful consultant. You also have been supportive of the ADMC, which is a, a organization that supports consultants and you've given a lot back. You helped a lot of people. You've helped all-star helped uh, build and create all-star. So you've done a lot for dentistry and uh, my apologies for being so provocative with the title, but l- let's just start with this, some definitions. Uh, again, you have over 30 years in dental consulting. What is dental consulting? Well, well, dental consulting is going to be uh, working with an, an, a person who's qualified and experienced in the, in the area that they're, they're consulting. But a, a consultant is going to think more strategic. They're going to think over the long haul. A consultant is going to help you decide you know, what kind of practice do you want to have? What kind of staff do you want to be around? Um, you know, what kind of patients do you want to, to have in your practice? What, what way do you like to practice? What types of procedures? You, you know what I mean? So they're going to think over the long haul, how could we set things up in your office so that you can do this for your whole career? You know, because I wouldn't want a client thinking about, I can't wait one more day and then I can retire in another day and I don't have I'm that much closer to retirement. So, so I think of a consultant as somebody who's like your business partner, who's working with you to help you run your business the way you want to run it. Not, not like the neighbor does it or the guy down the street or what you might hear about in the news or, or whatever. So a, a consultant is going to look at a wide variety of issues. A consultant is going to take into consideration, you know, your staff and how much staffing do you need and, and are they trained correctly? They're going to look at your patient base. You know, do you have enough capacity in your schedule to handle uh, those patients? Are they the right kind of patients? I know that makes me sound cruel, but I think people know who are listening know what I'm talking about. Are these patients who are interested in what problems you can solve for them? You know, we can evaluate the facility. Is it adequate? Do you have to add on? You know, there's a lot of advertisements that make you think you have to, but maybe you don't. Maybe you can get by. Maybe we can be productive in the space that we have, you know, and so we can take care of things. And of course, we're always, always looking at the economics. We can't, we can't ignore that uh, because the practice has to be profitable. And so, and it's got to be in a profitable way that's ethical and moral, you know, to the owner of the business. And it's got to be able to help them get the lifestyle financially that they're looking for. Um, I would want every client that I work with to be able to retire with dignity. I want them to be able to do their job for their whole career, but I want them to be able to retire with dignity. Um, I want them to be able to um, uh, provide for their team, uh, not only compensate them well, but provide a really good benefits package for them. So, So there's a lot. If I'm answering your question, Alex, there's a lot that we look at. We're not just looking at what's the hot problem right now. Because when I think of when people call consultants or they hire people who pseudo consultants in in my opinion like their their collections are bad or they're having a problem with insurance claims you know what i mean so it's just this one little issue and they think oh if i just solve my ar problem you know or my insurance problem every other problem will go away and what they fail to realize is yes you probably could bring somebody in for one little issue but what that will do is just expose something else you know, that isn't working. And unfortunately, that person's probably not going to be qualified or have the experience like to, to do the phone conversions and do the phone training or, or maybe to do the scheduling that needs to be done right to, to, 
allow you to do the procedures in the time frame that you want to do it, uh, help you with treatment acceptance, if, if I'm making any sense. So sometimes you can get a trainer to come in to show you how to use the computer, but that person probably cannot train you on how to help make your exam flow better. That's what, a, in my opinion, that's what a consultant is, is going to do. I like where you define trainer as different than a consultant. That's a new terminology I heard of. And you also could have a consultant. I don't know if I would use a word, but they'd be very specialized. So a Dentrix consultant. So they, they do one activity or trainer. I like what you said, trainer, because to bring in someone that may, and this is what you're saying, one of the concerns is you bring somebody in who maybe parades or has a banner of dental consultant, but they're very, they're more of a specialist. Yes. And they're not looking at the entire holistic, because I know when you work with clients, you look at their finances, you look at the whole totality yeah. of very strategic, which is how do I build a great life and make good money in the process? Yeah. And yeah. you're there to then build everything from that point. And you might bring in other specialists or trainers uh, to supplement it, but you're like the, you're like the general contractor, uh, but it's all in house and you do a lot of it. Now, what are just give me some ideas of what are some issues that you've helped? And again, when I say you, it's not like an advertisement for you, but to have you be the avatar of other consultants. Like, what are other things that you've done or consultants like you have helped practices over the years accomplish? Well, give ideas of what a, a, a lot does. of it is like the lifestyle that they want to live. And, and what I mean by that is some doctors want to work a lot, um, but most dentists are are raising a family. And so they want to have time with their kids and they want to have a business. So I always look at their business as the foundation to create that, that happy life, you know, because if, if work works well, then almost everything else in their life is going to work well. So in my consulting and, and even what we do at All Star is that we're focused on productivity because we know you can get busy. We know that. It doesn't take much to make a practice busy, but we know that a busy practice is not productive and a busy practice, we know this just from offices that participate heavily with insurance, that busyness isn't necessarily profitable. And so we have to have profits in a dental practice so that we can renovate, buy new equipment, keep up with technology, provide better salaries and benefits for our team. We also need that profitability to invest in our own retirement. I, I said earlier, I'd want you to retire with dignity. So that means during your career, you got you have to have enough money to invest in yourself. You know, um, part of what a consultant does is they also work with your other um, team around you because you probably have a CPA, you probably have a uh, financial advisor. And so what the consultant is going to do is make sure that those people get the information that they need in a format that they can use so that they can help make decisions about your taxes, about your investments, you know, and so they can help you if they get the right information, but the consultant can make sure that all that happens. I've had, I've heard before, or I wonder in some scenarios, a dentist might say, wow, dental consulting can be expensive. Is it worth it? Um, it? It can be expensive, like anything, if it doesn't give you results. You know, you could spend a lot of money on a laser, but if you can't charge more because of it, or it doesn't attract more patients into your practice because you have it, then that laser is going to be really expensive and probably not, not worth it in the end. And so when you get the results that you're looking for, the lifestyle, the profitability, the right staff, the right patients, it makes it well worth it. Um, I would say if, if you want to get numbers to it, Alex, you know what I mean? I would think that, that um, if you hired a consultant, you could fully, fully expect that your productivity would go up probably somewhere between 20 and 25%. And you'll start seeing that increase right away if things are done correctly. And it wouldn't surprise me if that would add maybe six to even 10 points to your profitability. It comes right down to the bottom line, you know, uh, from that increase in productivity. So that, that increase in productivity isn't going to go to operating expenses. It's going to go to net profit uh, when it's done correctly. So, so I find given, you know, given that perspective, uh, if you want to look at it purely from a financial point of view, oh, it always pays for itself. 
I, I sound arrogant when I say that, but you don't get right. to you you don't get to be in this business for as long as I have if people don't make the money that they think they should get. So I, I, I love it when people tell me, you know, you've already paid for yourself. I'm like, thank you. <laughs> and then there's only one Larry Gazzardo, but there's a lot of wonderful consultants out there that teach or support a similar philosophy, a service-based philosophy. And there are others that don't. And there are some that are very expensive. When I say very expensive, we're saying north of $100,000 a year um, and you know, big commitments and so on. And I have dentists that come to me kind of bruised and beat up with those experiences. What happened there? Well, what was what, that all about? What what I find is, and I I know lots of great people in consulting, so I don't I don't want any of them to be offended. But what I notice is, I'm an independent, you know, pretty much solo uh, consultant. I work with All Star. You know, I mean, we have our team, but I wouldn't consider us this big conglomerate, like franchise type operation you know, where they have pockets of people all over the place. And so a lot of the fee that you're paying is really to support all those other people that you never mm -hmm. see, that you never hear from, that never come to your office, that never talk to your team, and, and that you never speak with either. But you got to pay for that big office. Um, you know, you, you have to pay for that big team that, that, that's out there. And so, you know, with an independent group like ours, you're just paying for us, you know, and we're the ones who do the consulting. You know what I mean? There's not other people that are involved. So the, the franchises have, I call them franchises, but they have layers of management. And the other issue with them is that they pretty much have one way to do things. You know, as independent people like us, we can actually look independently and individually at every client. What do you want? You know, uh, just the two of us, Alex, there's nothing wrong with us, but my personality is definitely different than yours. It's not a good or bad thing, but what works for me probably will not work for you. And what works for you probably won't work for me. But if I'm a part of a franchise, I only have one way of telling you how to do it. And if you don't do it that way because it doesn't work for you, then that's their, that's their out. They go, well, you don't do what we tell you to do. <laughs> it's like, well, I don't want to do that, you know, because I don't want to work on weekends or I don't want to work at night or I don't want to see 500 patients. And you know what I'm saying? Uh, and so they kind of have just one way of doing things. And it's that proven method, you know, and, and there's more than one way to skin a cat. And so independently, we could really look at your own personality. We can look at what you're trying to accomplish, what you want to be known for in your community, what kind of lifestyle do you want? And then we put everything together. So it's not a one size fits all. I am, and I tell this to every client we, we take on that um, I want to sit down with you after I've an analyzed the practice, I'll, I'll tell you what I see and I'll tell you what I think. And then you're going to tell me what you think of it. Because there is more than one way to skin a cat. Anybody who's been in dentistry more than about six months knows this. My job is to find the way that's most appropriate for you. And, and, and I'll tell you why. It's, it's not my intention to be somebody's consultant for life. You know, you, you may need somebody to kind of hold your hand as time goes by, but a good consultant should be able to teach you and your team uh, how things are done in the office and it should regenerate itself. They should be able to teach anybody else. If it's more complicated than that, then there's something wrong with the system. And so, and so a good consultant can teach you how to do it and then you can carry the ball uh, from there. And so that's why I'm keen on picking, it's a little bit harder as a consultant because you are constantly kind of changing this for you and changing you for that. Um, but my point is, is that if I come up with a process in the system that works for you, you're going to do it. Because I know that people will do things when I'm looking over their shoulder. That's not a good consultant or that's not a good consulting uh, profession. Sure, anybody would do it when somebody's looking over their shoulder. I want you to do it when I'm gone. And when you can do it and feel comfortable with it, managing your staff, leading your team, communicating with your patients, you know, evaluating whether you should participate with insurance and your own profitability and all that. When you could do that yourself, now you're self-sufficient. To me, that's a good consultation that, that you're up and you're on your own and you can do it by yourself. 
you read my mind. I love the quote you always use is we don't throw logic out the window. You got to be no. reasonable. Whereas there are some companies like this is the only way you can do it. They're very monolithic and that becomes a problem for many practices. Tell me who is a good candidate for consulting and who's not. Um, well, obviously a good candidate for somebody consulting is somebody who wants to grow, um, somebody who wants to learn from another individual, um, somebody who definitely wants help and, and somebody who also wants to be able to do it themselves. So they want to participate in the process. If, if somebody just wants you to, I just come in here and fix this, like take care of this individual, you know, that person doesn't want to participate in the growth of the practice. They're just hoping it happens. <laughs> you know, they're hoping that it happens, but it's it's going to be very, very short lived. So, so really the ideal candidate is somebody who um, maybe doesn't have the lifestyle that they want, is getting too busy and they don't understand why I'm, I'm so busy. I can't work any more than I'm already working. You know, that's a good candidate. Somebody who's frustrated with, geez, I have these fantastic postgraduate training skills, but I don't, I don't get to utilize them. I've, I've got the wrong patient base, you know? And so, but mostly I would say it's somebody who wants help, somebody who wants to learn from somebody else, and somebody who wants to participate in the process, because I feel like a good consultant is going to teach you how to do it, and then you can carry the ball from there. That's, that's a good consultation. I love it, Larry Gazzardo. That's why you're our lead consultant and our head instructor. I'll also leave a link to our coaching page slash consulting page. If you'd like to learn more about our coaching and consulting support. And thank you, Larry, yeah, for being thanks, on the Alex. program. Yeah, I want people to be independent. I want them to be on their own. That's wonderful. What is the the quote? If you feed a man a fish, you feed him for a day. If you teach a man a fish, you feed him for a lifetime. A lifetime, yes. Remember to follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube. You can get episodes as they are released. And please share the podcast with your friends. And until next time, go out there and be an all-star. An all-star. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Dental All-Stars. Visit us online at allstardentalacademy.com. 